I'm back again to share some words of encouragement, some of the word of God with my brothers and sisters, because the spirit of the Lord put it on my heart. And this is a message that is not meant to be kept. It is intended for all who fall under the voice of the Most High, who are under the spirit of God Almighty. I'm going to read to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. I'm now going to skip down to verse 37 we are still in chapter 30 24 the book of matthew verse 37 but as the days of noah were so also shall so also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Many people assume that the ones that are going to be taken away are the children of God. In a manner of speaking, you're right. Just like Noah and his family entered into the ark of the Most High God. But what happened to the people who didn't enter into the ark? The storm came and took them away. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Yeshua. Now I want to attach it because, like I said in an earlier video, we do line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. We are now in the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself self shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words." Many times because we are taught that we will meet the Lord in the clouds. Many people look up and think, oh, we're going up into the sky and the bad people are going to be left behind. And we're going to get caught up with God in the clouds and meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We will be with the Lord. But you have to understand when we get caught up in the clouds, what the clouds mean. The Hebrew rendering means a covering. We shall be covered by God. Okay. So when they say together with them, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. We will be caught up in the covering. In the Hebrew, it means the covering. 
okay? To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The clouds in the Hebrew means a covering. When you speak of meeting them in the air, it's the atmosphere, the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere. Okay. Once again, I'm going to reference the book of Matthew, which I read from first. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of man, of the son of man. Right? And we know that in the days of Noah, that people were marrying and being given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the ark was a covering for Noah and his family. Okay? They knew not until the flood came and took them away. The flood took away the evil people, the ones who would not follow God. That's who got taken away. Okay? For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. All right. We shall be caught up in the clouds and the clouds in the Hebrew means the covering of the most high. And meet him in the air, the atmosphere, the atmosphere. And so shall we be ever with the Lord. Many of us in our spiritual learnings have not been taught correctly. We have not studied correctly, nor have we been led to study. Serve and study and show thyself approved, rightfully dividing the word of God. But if we haven't been taught how to study, maybe we don't know the truth of what the word really is saying to us. There's a cloud coming. It's the covering of the Most High God. Noah entered into the covering of the ark. We are going to enter into a covering as well. And when we get caught up and meet him in the air, the atmosphere, the atmosphere. Believe me, we do understand atmosphere. Have you ever been somewhere and there's a negatively charged atmosphere? The, the, the vibes are just negative and you don't want to be there. Or have you ever been somewhere and it's a good fit? It's a positive atmosphere. There's even a song, it's shifting the atmosphere, when the spirit comes in, when the spirit comes in, there's a covering coming for the people of God, there's a covering coming, and the atmosphere is going to change. And those who chose to go against God, those who disobeyed, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man when he returns. They're going to be taken away. God's coming again. He's a man of war. And he tolerates no rivals. No rivalry. Okay? You've got people who disregard God. They try to change the Bible. They try to change the word of God to suit their purposes. But God's coming back. He's sending Yeshua. And just like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. We will remain the earth the atmosphere, 
is going to change. And it's easy when you think about it. Remember, as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. As it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. And if you don't think an atmosphere can change while we live on the earth, we know that this country of the United States, the atmosphere changed when it was invaded by the colonizers. The indigenous people had one atmosphere that they had lived in and enjoyed for untold millennia. That atmosphere is no more right now. That world is gone. So we know atmospheres can be changed. And that people can be driven away. Some floods are symbolic and yet literal. And what do I mean? It was a symbolic flood that came to the United States. All you have to do is ask the indigenous people. Yes, it was. There was a flood. There was a flood of colonizing invaders that destroyed their earth and their lands, their homes, their sacred burial grounds, their histories, their memories, their lifestyles, their loves. That trail of tears they teach about is a trail of death. That's what it is. So we know the atmosphere can change. We know that a flood of people can be just as great as a flood of water in its destructive power, in its changing force. So when they talk about as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man when he returns. Yeah. And we, I'm switching between the book of Matthews and the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4. When the Lord returned, the dead in Christ. They rise first. And then the living shall be caught up. Into the clouds. The covering. And me hit him in the air. What air? The atmosphere. The atmosphere. The atmosphere. That's what the air is. It's an atmosphere. It's shifting the atmosphere. So when they say clouds, look up in the Hebrew what clouds mean. It's a covering. And we know we're walking through the days of prophecy. We know this thing is coming to pass. I'm going to read from two separate books now. Short verses to let you know. First, we're going to go into... The book of Habakkuk. And we're going to talk about what we've all seen, what we all know to be true. In order for us to stay on the same page, in order for us to run this thing together, we're going to go into it together. Okay. The prophet saw the evil that the other nation was doing to Israel and he spoke to God about it. And then the prophet waited and he watched for what God would reply. This is what God said. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, it shall come to pass, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. 
Okay. Then he's speaking about that destructive nation. He's telling the prophet what's coming to pass to that nation that is oppressed, murdered, looted, looted, plundered Israel. He said, Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. I am in the second chapter of Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk. And I am moving throughout the chapter in differing verses. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. I'm going to read one more verse from the book of Habakkuk and then I'm going to move. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. And establish a city by iniquity. There are towns that have been built by the death. Blood means the life of others, the death of others. And establish a city by iniquity, by doing evil. That's where the city ain't got its strength. But God said, woe to him. Woe. That buildeth a town with blood and established a city by iniquity. Now I'm going to read the last before I begin to speak. We are in the book of Romans, first chapter, 24th verse. These are things you are seeing be revealed before your very eyes. Now, it's in the now. Now, these prophecies are coming to pass now. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corrupt, like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to unclean, uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which is meat. And finally, my brothers and sisters, still in chapter one, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. All these events, all these things that have transpired and are transpiring, are written about in the book of prophecy. We are walking through it. We are in an age where we are seeing the word of God. Every day the prophecy is being fulfilled. As it was in the days of Noah. Right now, we are watching a nation that has left God behind. Put him on the shelf. They make jokes about God. They make jokes.
They make commercials that make jokes, movies that make jokes. You want to play with something, I would pass on playing with God. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Fools. You have to watch and keep your eyes open. You have to understand that you are in a mighty time, a mighty time. And we have to be prepared, brothers and sisters, because the Son of Man, the Son of God is coming back. As he did in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. When we get caught up in the clouds, the covering, the covering, remember, Look up the definition of words to understand it, the force of what they meant. This Bible was translated by King James. Remember, it was his version. It was his version. So when you read, when you study, go deep. Go deep. There are words in the English language that, according to the original scripture, they had a completely different meaning. A completely different meaning. What appears one way is another. Clouds do cover overhead. They cover us. And the air is the atmosphere. The atmosphere. A physical man, physical person, cannot understand spiritual things. So when you read some of the translation, you have to understand who was translated. This is a gift and a blessing because there are brothers and sisters seeking a closer walk with the Most High God, giving Him honor, honoring His word of life, honoring His glory, His holy rock. The Ruach is the Holy Spirit. Some people call him the Ruach HaKadosh. That's in the Sefer. And the Sefer is the Holy Bible. There are books that were removed from the Bible. The ancient Bibles did not have those books removed. There are other nations that still use those books that were removed from the Holy Bible. Bible, the Sefer. And remember, God doesn't want us to sleep. He wants us to know this isn't a hidden message. It's only hidden from people who have eyes that see not. What does that mean? Many people think eyes that see not mean, oh, they're blind. He's not talking physical blindness. There are people who have physical eyes that cannot see, but they see more than many because their spiritual eyes are wide open. Ears that hear not. Because when they hear the word, they decipher it with a carnal mind. But we're talking about that discernment that comes from on high. One of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is a marriage that is going to take place. It talks about the marriage of the Lamb. If you remember correctly, in 1 Corinthians, it talks about the head, the head of the body. Jesus is head over the man, the man is head over the woman, the woman is head over the children, the body. The body is the house of God, the people of God. 
But there's supposed to be a marriage. There's a marriage that's supposed to take place. If you look into the books of prophecy, God talks about, show me the bill of divorcement. He's talking to Israel. Show me. Why would he use the word divorcement? Because evidently there was a marriage. That body is married to God. And the word of God comes back to bring us into alignment so that we're ready for the wedding. To be married to the Most High. To live according to his will, his commands, his word. That's that marriage ceremony. He takes us out of the hands of the beast, the enemy. And you have to understand, and many people question, how did we get here? I used to question it all the time. How did we get into this? I actually got upset at one point thinking God didn't love us. Why is this happening to the black people? He must not love us. Until I found out that we disobeyed him. Our ancestors disobeyed God, trying to follow the ways of the other nations. You have people among us now who try to follow the ways of the other nations. And God told us in Deuteronomy 28 what would happen to us. As long as we follow his laws, his words, and his commands, we would be under a blessing. If we didn't, we would be under a curse. And when you read what happens to us with that curse, it fits one nation. That nation is us. We also know about Exodus when we were brought out of the first Egypt. But there's another Exodus. I want to talk about that Exodus for a moment. We're going to the book of Jeremiah. I have to make sure I got the right chapter. I don't want to call it wrong. I believe it's chapter 16, verse 14. Yes, it is. This is the book of Jack Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So there's going to come a day when they're not talking about the first exodus anymore. And I'm going to tell you why. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into the land that I gave unto their fathers. Hmm. Listen to that and we'll say it one more time. We're in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. It is written and spoken about in other books. But I'm going to stop there for the moment. We, during the transatlantic slave trade, were scattered all over the world. The poor Portuguese took us, scattered us in Europe, sold us into Asia. We know that they sold us in South America, the islands, and North America. But there was also the Arabic slave trade. They sold us into the eastern countries, too. We were scattered all over the world. All over the world. There's going to come an exodus. Greater than anything that they've known. 
because we are the only people who don't know our name. And we're not going to talk about, well, you're from Africa. That is as about as puny a statement as there can be. Africa, first of all, has 53 countries within it. And for some reason, everybody wants to put the black people here to create that confusion in the, under one umbrella. And that's not true. Just like you have variations of Europeans, some being Nordic, some being Mediterranean, some being Germanic. You also have variations of Asians, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Laos, Philippines. You even have variations of the Latin people. But for some reason, they want us all to believe that there's only one group of black people. Some of the people were from the land of Ham. And they are descendants of Ham. But some of the black people are from Shem. And they are descendants of Shem. That's why when you remember the Bible story, the truth of when Mary and Joseph had to depart out of uh, Jerusalem, they hid in Egypt. They were amongst the Egyptians. If you hide, in Egypt, which is in the land of Africa, on that landmass, you have to be able to blend in. You must be able to blend in. Paul, at one point, was thought to be an Egyptian, and he was a Hebrew. So it tells you what they look like. These people were scattered to the four winds. I wonder what people have been scattered like that Who lost their name, their identity And why is it so urgent and important That that identity still be hidden to this day If you read about the Inquisition If you study books written in the 1800s And the description of the Hebrews you're going to be shocked at how they are detailed in their physicality, their tonality, meaning their um, color, their tones, okay? Awaken to thyself. I would not trust my enemy who intended to destroy me, who stole my birthright to, sell, to tell me who I am. But God, who will not be mocked. God is a God of light, a God of illumination. And the truth is coming out. The truth of who you are, the truth of who we are. When you are looking for those last days, when you are looking for the coming of the Son of Man, understand you're not going to be snatched up. You're going to be caught up in the cloud, a covering of the Most High, the Spirit of the Lord, and in the atmosphere. And the other one, just as it was in the days of Noah, what happened to them in the days of Noah? They were destroyed. But it won't be water this time. Mm -mm. There's a cleansing fire coming. There's a cleansing fire coming. There's a storm. But it won't be water this time. This message is for you, brothers and sisters, that you're encouraged and that you walk in your faith 
And don't, you don't allow anybody to lie to you or misguide you. You are of the Confederate House of Israel. And his truth and his word and the knowledge of self is here. The awakening has occurred. How do you know to trust a prophet is a seer or a prophet? When they speak, if their words do not fall to the ground, you have met, you have heard from the same prophetess or prophet. But if their words fall to the ground, don't fear them. The words they speak did not come from the Most High God. That's how you know. Let this word bless you and keep you. Because these are God's words. They are not my words. I am simply his messenger and his vessel that I allow him to speak through me because it is an honor to honor him. It is an honor. An honor. And also fear. Yes, yeah, a very healthy fear, but a fear. Because to do something against God can lead to destruction for the prophet is seal. So when you meet people and they tell you that God gave them a message, if their words fall to the ground, they did not get their message from God. But if their words come to pass, then you know it's of God. That's how you know. You can see people giving over to reprobate minds now. It's in your face. It's, it's not hidden. This isn't a faraway thing. We don't have to work overtime to figure it out. You have people right now that they consider their animals, their children. I watch commercials. It's gone so far that they're the dog coming down the steps like he's waiting and happy for Christmas morning. But he gave him over to a reprobate mind. He began to make a distinction between Israel and the spiritual Egyptians. That distinction is going to grow stronger and stronger and stronger. There's a pestilence in the land, but it isn't against Israel. Watch for the signs. You are not imagining anything. It's God. No man can stop it because no man is doing it. It's the most high God through his living word bringing it to pass. And brothers and sisters, don't get puffed up. Don't get puffed up. Just like when Korah and Dathan were out in the wilderness and they were speaking against Moses. Korah, Dathan, Abiram, when they spoke against Moses out in the wilderness, when they became puffed up and they thought they could take a position God did not give them, God made that earth open up and swallow them lie and cover them over. In truth, it's a humble beauty. It's shocking. It's, it's really so great, so vast. It comes in waves. It comes in levels. And we are going to go out into the wilderness when he comes and takes us. And two-thirds of us are not going to make it because they're rebels. But I believe that everybody within the sound of my voice that I'm speaking to, you're the one third. And I'm going to see you in the wilderness. God Almighty, I pray that we all make it home with him. 
And there are those from other nations who will be with us. Yes, it's true. Because all nations and all people from other nations are not evil, and God knows that. It will be a mixed multitude. They are the ones who are grafted in. They are grafted in to that pure olive tree. They are the branches that were grafted in when the natural branches broke away. But the word of God also tells us that if an unnatural wild branch could be grafted in, how much easier for the natural branch to be grafted into its own tree. You are that natural branch. Go to the root from whence we come. From the vine. The word of God is the true vine. And the fruit we produce, we can't produce of ourselves. We have to be connected to the word of life. And as I said earlier, I believe I'm speaking to the one third. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he guide you in all your ways. And in the mighty name of Yeshua, may he give you peace. I'm looking for you. Again, this isn't an accident. And if your heart is skipping, if the words sound like they're meant for you, it's because they are. God gave me this message. If my words fall to the ground and don't listen, because you know they did not come from God. But if these words are hitting their mark, and you know from whence they come, and I'm just the vessel he's using, the vehicle he's speaking through, and my beautiful brother, my beautiful sister, I believe you're from that one third. Don't let go. Don't give up. God's on his way. No man knows the day. No man knows the hour. But we can tell the hour is close. And the end of this system is near. I'm going to get caught up with you in that covering cloud. When we get caught up in the air, the atmosphere charged with the spirit of the most high living God. You'll know. You'll know if it's of God. You'll know because the Most High will put it on you to know. And you pray on it. Don't take my word for anything. You let the Spirit of the Most High guide you, keep you direct. He will confirm these words or convict them. He will hold them up or he will let them fall to the ground. This message is for you. Because you need the message. You need the lesson. We all do. We need the support of one another. The love of one another. May the Lord God add a blessing to his word and to this message. To the listener as well as the speaker. And until we meet again. Be blessed. Peace.